God's words aren't um, def defective so that his son needs to come and um, dismantle them and you know decommission them and mothball the law of Moses and bring in a brand new set of laws and structures and strictures and 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 um, rules and standards and things like that reinvent the wheel and recreate what it means to be sin uh, to sin and to um, to be righteous. There's no need to do all that. Instead, what Jesus came was to and as I call it change the old man into a new man from the inside out this section is called old man new man and messianic judaism what yeshua came to bring was reform to the old system by ripping the sin out of the man and putting a new heart in there take the old heart out put a new heart in and help them understand god has always desired obedience to his words and his ways but the way we go about that is allowing god's spirit to change us from the inside out and thus, we take the same person that we started out with, and we simply become born again, but we're still the, it's still Ariel that's born again, right? I'm not, as I was talking last week, it's not, um, in my born again experience, I don't suddenly change into a different person, right? Uh, it's not like I go from being Ariel and suddenly I turn into Bob or something like that. It doesn't work. So, uh, David Stern is suggesting, why don't we look at Yeshua's, uh, analogy, if it indeed it is an analogy or a parable or a uh, uh, an allegory, if indeed that's what Yeshua is teaching, if it's not just a simple common sense where we don't need to where we don't need an, an an allegory at all, if it's simply just common sense lesson of hey, don't the, the old and the new are incompatible, just deal with that issue. Because I heard a few authors talk about hey, he's not even dealing with allegory, he's just talking about common sense. Why do we have to add something where Yeshua doesn't say there's a spiritual application? Like he does with other parables, right? Yeshua will often give a parable, and then his, his disciples will sit there scratching their head, trying to figure out what the parable is. And Yeshua will look at them and say, "What you still don't understand? Let me explain it to you." And then Yeshua will tell, say, "You know, the the, the kingdom of heaven is like this, and this, and this is what it means, and these are what the pieces mean." And he he um, uh, articulates, you know, what all the uh, the mystery is. But this time he doesn't do any of that. So maybe it is just common sense, right? So um um. Look at this. David Stern continues, uh, speaking of his perspective. He says, this understanding about that, we, that Yeshua is not here to replace the old with the new. This understanding is undergirded by the writer's careful choice of words. And we talked about this in the past, and now here's David Stern's articulation of it. The word new, which in the Greek is naos, wine, and the word fresh, which in the Greek is kainos, wineskins. And so, um, you, you'll, if you care to go and stop and look up the original Greek words behind the text, uh, and, but we can just see this if I just highlight just two, ver two verses. In verse 17 of the Matthew rendering, Jesus said, Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, but if it is, the skins burst and the wines are spilled and the skins are destroyed. The final clause says, But new wine is put into fresh wineskins. This is the ESV. Notice Jesus doesn't say, New wine is put into new wineskins. He doesn't use, this, use the word naos twice. The word rendered new in our English here is naos. Or you can say neos or neos, something like that. So naos, where we get the word neo in our English. Like the character in the, uh, um, uh, what was those movies? The um, Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix. Uh, neo, right? So his name means new, neo. So new wine is not put into new wine skins. Jesus says new wine is put into fresh wineskins. Some English translations say new wine is put into new wineskins. That English translation is hiding a little bit of the Greek. And I realize that the word neos and kainos are not hard, fast, um, different uh, differences in meaning. There's a little bit of overlap in the nuance as well. So don't get too hung up on the neos and kainos. However, when the application allows for it, we can safely um, go away, walk away with the idea that um, neos can mean something uh, just brand new uh, chronologically, never before on the scene, like um, you know, babies brought into the world, born, that he would be a new baby, meaning he's never before existed in the world, he's brand new, new on the scene. Or like when I bought this laptop that I'm using right now, this MacBook Air, it was brand new to me. It was not a refurbished laptop, it was not a, 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 um, a, you know, a laptop that someone else previously owned or anything like that. It was brand new, factory fresh. Uh, I think they uh, the manufacture date was like three weeks prior to the day I date I bought it because you can look these things up. So this would be a naos laptop. By comparison, the Greek word kainos, some people say kainos or uh, something to that effect, kainos, uh, but kainos is how I pronounce it. Uh, the 
fresh wineskins, the word fresh there can include the nuance of reconditioned, something that was brought back to life but previously existed. So in this example with the laptop, if I would have purchased a refurbished laptop or a previously owned laptop that was simply restored, Understand my um, uh, uh, example here? In those cases, if I was speaking Greek, I should describe this laptop as a Kainos laptop because it's not brand new. It's new to me, so that's fine. But um, uh, qualitatively, it's the same laptop that someone else was using or that Apple owned. Um, they simply reconditioned it or refreshed it or refurbished it or something like that. So, um, so instead of quant uh, uh, chronologically new, it's simply qualitatively new. That would might be the way to interact with these two words. One is qua uh, chronologically new, like new in time, and the other is qualitatively new. So even in the Luke account, it's uh, Yeshua does that as well. Uh, verse 38, but new wine must be put into fresh wineskins, right? Looked it up in the Greek, same concept. Well, that's what David Stern is alluding to.